Yo, what's up everyone? Air Comics here with the Comic Collectors Guild. And today I'm going to be reviewing all of the books I picked up from New Comic Book Day. The last New Comic Book Day that we're going to have for a while. March 25th, 2020. So stay tuned. Welcome back everyone. I hope you're all staying safe. I know this country and the world's going through a pretty hard time right now with the pandemic. Make sure you don't touch your face, wash your hands, please stay quarantined if you can. Well, I mean most places you should be, unless if you uh, still have to go to work, so I'm sorry to hear that. I do too. It happens. But please stay safe. We can get through this. I have so much cool stuff to go over with you guys. I've got so much stuff planned for this page. As you know, no more new comic book day for a while. Um, I'm in the process of picking up some older stuff. I'm going to have like uh, kind of like a throwback Tuesday or throwback Thursday, something like that. So I'm going to have a pull box. I'm going to randomly select certain books. And uh, that's what I'm going to review for the week for like a throwback. I've got other kind of newer stuff, different runs. Right here I recently picked up uh, one of the last shipments I guess from my comic shop because they're shutting down too for a while. So I got one through six. Spider-Man The Life Story, Chip Zdarsky, can't wait to go over that. Also was able to recently finish up my Miles Morales run. Got like four different books here. I think it's a total of 17 issues that came out, so I can go over that as well. And this is a little bit older, but Dan Slott, Amazing Spider-Man, fourth run. Just some older books right here. Um, but I finished that up as well. So I've got plenty of stuff I can review, but I want to switch it up a little bit, you know, throw in some old school books, the Bronze Age, maybe a little bit Silver Age, you know, throw, get it, uh, you know, do some different stuff for you guys. So I'm going to get those out of the way. Um, before we get started on all these books, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for me, please. And if you're not already doing so, make sure you check out my Instagram. My Scarlet Witch Vision giveaway just finished up, so congrats to the winner. I tagged you a few times, so please get back to me. And um, other than that, I got a new giveaway coming up for the month of April. It's a slab, so be sure to check it out. I'm going to be posting about it either tomorrow or the next day. It's going to run through the entire month of April. You're going to like it. Uh, I picked up, what was it, two... Looks like 10 or 11 books, uh, just at a quick glance. Picked up a few extra ones because I knew we weren't going to be getting any new books for a while. So let's get started on them. Honestly, overall, I thought most of the books were very good this week. I had a few issues with a few of them, and I'm just going to get them out of the way right in the beginning, and just going to go from there. On the stump, number two. Awesome concept, awesome artwork. I really don't like it at all, though. Um... So, you know, politicians fight, the congressmen fight, they're trying to get their laws passed, but they actually fight in a ring, and whoever wins, you know, they get the law passed. Great concept. And the artwork falls through pretty well, too. So, you know, kind of cartoonish, but, you know, very thick lines, and, you know, it's very good. But it's, this issue just had so much going on, and I really don't remember even the names of the characters. They're all kind of just forgettable. And it felt like every couple pages was like a fresh, different plot point for the, for the issue. And it's like, I don't really know what to follow along right now. There's so much going on, and honestly, I really didn't like it. Maybe there's just too much space in between the issues, but overall, it's just not for me. So we're going to move on, and this is the only other one that I really didn't like. Force Works 2020, number two. I really overall like the tie-ins, well, tie-ins and the main run for the Iron Man 2020. I think it's very good, but this Force Works, I don't know, kind of the Machine Man as well, but this one just didn't do it for me. So if you can recall from the last issue, it ended up with the Force Works team, they were on some random island, and it had some odd, like, machine hybrid type monsters that were just, I don't know, they kind of attacked them, and then they kidnapped a few of them, but this issue picks up right where that was, they're all basically locked in a cage, and their game plan is to get out and they gotta find War Machine. He's somewhere else. And that's that's kind of the whole issue. Once they get out, they're like, alright, now we gotta find War Machine. But at the same time, some giant machine monster thing is also, they got like attacking as well. So now they got these weird little monster hybrid machines. They got this big one that they're trying to uh, get away from. But at the whole time, they still have to try to save War Machine. So I didn't really like it. 
Artwork was okay, but at the very end of the issue, War Machine did get saved, but it was no one on the Force Works team. Ended up getting saved by Modoc. So they brought him into the issue. I think it might be cool. I'm excited to see where it goes. But overall, that tie-in didn't do it for me. Moving on, we have Road to Empire number one. It actually was a really cool issue. I was a little bit surprised by it. Um, so the whole thing focuses on obviously the Cree and Scroll, yeah, Cree and Scroll War. But the cool thing is, so the issue starts off. You're following a Scroll family. They give a little bit of backstory about them and what their purpose is on Earth. Still, basically, they're finding this other Cree, whatever Cree is left on Earth. But at the same time. Between every like couple pages, you get like the entire backstory of the Korean Scroll War, like what started it, what continued it, and it just went from there. And it was really awesome. Artwork changed so you could tell it was a different perspective of the story. And once it eventually hit the main story again, you saw the uh, like the Kree and the Scroll they met up with each other, and it was kind of like that Spider-Man meme when they're like yo, and they're looking at each other. So it was kind of like that. And they, I don't know, I guess this, the Kree had a message that said that the war was over with and they didn't really know what to do from there. So that's where the issue ended. Really excited to see where it goes because it was a fun issue. Artwork was cool. I'll show you a little bit of both. So here's the main story with like the Kree and the scrolls. But then here's where they swap to a backstory. You can tell it's different. It's a little bit... Um, not as defined might be the right way to describe it or maybe i don't know a little just a little bit different but you can tell and it's cool big fan of that one as well next up revenge of the cosmic ghost rider number four i don't know what to say about this issue every issue is just very okay nothing's really great about it nothing seems like wow i can't believe this was this just happened i just don't care about anything happening in this issue it all seems pointless and the artwork's cool the story itself seems cool like the action i guess but i don't know it's whatever if uh, so last issue you saw cammy got yeeted by the cosmic king into some like black hole dimension looking thing so this whole story is basically just cammy and what happened to her so whatever she got thrown into basically threw her back in time and where she landed um, I guess it's either days prior or maybe a week or two prior to what actually happened in present time. But it's with the Cosmic King. They're mourning the death of Thanos. So it's around that time frame. And so Cosmic King actually has like no purpose in this story at all. He, he was built up in the first three issues pretty heavily. And he's nothing. He's just a small pawn in a bigger game. And that bigger game was like this weird tapeworm thing. And even that was nothing. So once Cammy somehow got back into the regular realm, uh, the Cosmic King was already infected by this like tapeworm that wanted Frank Castle's soul. Because if you remember, he got a soul at the end of the last issue. By the time Cammy got there, Frank Castle already like killed this tapeworm Cosmic King thing. So it really meant no it really meant nothing. But you know, just like every other issue, it's got something going on on the last page. It just draws you in. You're like. Man, I really need to read the next one now. But it just, it's nothing. So Mephisto came back from hell and he's like, Hey Frank, you know, like you got your soul back. That was my soul. I need a soul. And he's like, well, you ain't going to get one. But Mephisto ended up taking Cammy's soul and that's how the issue ended. So I'm going to show you that real quick. And that's when, for me, I was like, you know, now, now I need to read the next one. Because, you know, that seems interesting. They took Cammy's soul. Cammy's now in hell and frank castle's got his soul back but he still has like these cosmic um powers so i don't know but i'm interested which is crazy because i don't really like any of the issues but the last couple pages really draw me in we'll see one issue that really surprised me this week is folk lords number five you know i've really been dogging on these issues the last few uh Last few, I didn't. I don't think I liked two, three, or four. Four was like a massive letdown to me because they finally hit this library they've been talking about the whole time, and it literally was nothing. It was dumb, whatever. But this issue, Ansel finally found a folk lord, 
And if you uh, kind of remember, if you've been reading this story, you're going to know what I'm talking about. But there's kind of like a narr- narrative, like someone else is like talking slash writing the story. And you find out he is the folklore, like that guy that they've been showing. He's actually the one that Ansel finds and he thinks that he's like some head honcho because he's not from this world. But he's really he's really just some dude that just happens to be here. He is a folklore though, so Ansel technically completed his quest but it just opened up a whole new thing because they showed some girl, I guess, found the door leading to, um, like, our world. And now, I don't know if they've been communicating, but she's been writing letters, I guess, to Ansel as well. That's like, come find me. And the way at the backside is, it's it's like you can tell it's New York. So, it was a cool issue. I'm really excited. I'm, you know, I'm excited for it. I don't know. It was cool. They finally drew me in. They finally hit what they were supposed to hit. And it was a good story. Next up, we have Basketful Heads number six. Fantastic issue this time around. It was awesome. June Branch. She's an awesome character. And honestly, you find yourself a girl like June Branch. She has went above and beyond to find Liam and save him. Despite finding out that he's basically been lying the whole time. That he's been an FBI informant. And she had no idea. And she's still like, well, you know what? I'm going to save him. I'm going to do that. But she, um, so she hacks off Hank's head. I think his name's Hank. It's the police chief's kid. And adds it to the collection. I think she's up to like four or five now. So, you know, she's, she's killing everybody with this axe. She is just getting it done. And it was cool. It was really cool to see it. She devised this whole plan using all of their heads because they were all in cahoots with each other. And they all... Are all corrupt. The whole town's, I guess, corrupt. Everybody's in on it. Police chief, police, police's kid, all these other casual other officers and a few other people. So everyone's in on this like money scheme, and Liam is here to expose it all. So she dev- she devises a plan, gets it all going, and that's basically the whole issue. But she does find Liam. She's he's out on this boat. He's tied up. He's beaten up, and she finally does it. She doesn't save him, though, because the police chief is there, and uh, he beats up on her a little bit and kind of throws her off the edge. I'll show you that real quick. So there they are. They finally meet up. They're finally found, reconnected. He is beaten up, and then police chief comes out of nowhere, starts whooping up on June Branch, and that's where she is left off. So I don't know. We'll see where she goes. It's a shame that there's going to be no more issues because... This is a great issue, and I'm really excited to see how it ends. Got a few more issues. Let's see what we got next. We got star number three. I want to say I really like this run. I'm not 100% sure yet. It's like good stories, but nothing actually seems to be happening. Uh, I don't know. So the last issue was like Star and Scarlet Witch were like fighting these monsters in some weird world, and this issue picked up... Um, that that was just like all in Ripley's head. It was all, it was not fake, but the reality stone was affecting her and Scarlet Witch thought that she could like help her control it, but she couldn't. So she ba- basically wakes up in that office with Scarlet Witch, Jessica Drew, and then Captain Marvel makes her way over there. Captain Marvel like, I don't know, set her off or pissed her off a little bit too much. And she used the reality stone and warped her back to her apartment. And because of that, like, weird energy that she used from the reality stone, all the bad guys looking for her, that was, like, the signal. Like, well, there she obviously is because nothing else is going to have that type of power. So the whole issue after that happened was the bad guys came to her. She kind of did some fighting, not a whole lot. We saw a little bit of backstory for um, something else in that story. Or, like, the backstory of, like, Captain Marvel with her, I guess, how it started. So if you read the Captain Marvel run, I'm sure you already were well caught up on that. I have not read it. So after that happens, you know, they do a little bit of fighting and the issue ended with Captain Marvel coming to the apartment, not really saving the day, but kind of beat up on the bad guys to the point where, you know, Captain Marvel is, well, she's ready to take her turn at Star. So, I really, I don't know, I liked the first issue, I really liked the second one, the third issue was just very, it was meh, it was alright, wasn't too bad though. Next up we got Wolverine number two. 
big fan of this issue, but at the same time, I don't exactly know what's going on in any of the X-Men issues. This kind of is just like this fun filler where I'm just like, oh, wow, this is a good story, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this. But I don't know really the backstory of anything because I haven't read almost any of the Dawn of X. But I do know, so from the last issue, Wolverine, there's something wrong with him. He's not right in the head. He killed his crew. Or maybe he didn't kill his crew. He woke up in, um, like, he woke up at Krakoa at the repair shop getting fixed or whatever that is. I'm sure if you've been caught up, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But they've been talking about this pale girl that seems to possibly be controlling some of the mutants. And that's why the pedals are being stolen on the Marauder ship. The Marauder ship is like hoarding everything and giving it to somebody. I don't know. It's a fun story to me, but I wish I had more backstory on it. So at some point, if they come out with a hardcover, I'm probably going to read it all. But until that time comes, I'm just going to be getting Wolverine. So continuing on with that, Wolverine and this other guy, his name's Jeff. Um, I don't know Jeff's last name, but I can get it for you real quick. Jeff Bannister, he's a CIA agent. So Wolverine and Jeff team up. They're trying to figure out who this pale girl is, and they're trying to get these pedals back. And the whole time, I guess, something was actually wrong with Wolverine, and he ended up killing Jeff at the very end of the issue. I'll show you that real quick. It was pretty cool. So there's something wrong with him. He's not right in the head. Maybe it's this pale girl that's doing it. Who knows? But it's a cool story so far, and I'm definitely digging it. The artwork is fantastic. So... We'll see. Last three issues of the week, my top three, they were very good. Uh, I'm sure a couple of them could have even. Ugh, I'm sure a couple of them could have even been swapped out, but I'm pretty satisfied with my top three. Once in future, number seven. What an issue! I was very surprised at how good it was. I knew the artwork was already going to be great. Uh, Gillen killed it on the last story. I just wasn't a big fan of how it ended. It kind of felt rushed, but either way, it was a great setup for the whole thing. I, I just knew 7 was going to be good. Whenever that new arc was going to drop, I was like, I'm going to get it no matter what. It's going to be good. So I really enjoyed it. The artwork's fantastic. It kind of picks up like you see all the three heroes. You got Rose, Duncan, the grandma, kind of off doing their own thing. Duncan's killing pixies. Rose is making sure England's still safe. But she finds like some weird heat, like, uh, I don't know, it's just like a heat rating or something that is just not normal. So Duncan goes to check it out, and then while that's going on, you see uh, Sir Galahad lived from the last story, and he sat on King Arthur's chair, became like some monster, and he's the thing that broke through the portal and now is in England. So at first you're reading it, and you're thinking like, oh, like, so this is, this is it, this is like, uh where the story's gonna go no so sir galahad now whoever whatever type of monster he is he breaks into some library or museum and he steals this book and you think like all right this book's gotta be pretty important so he has it and grandma comes saves a day shoots up sir galahad i think he makes i think he makes off like he lives to tell the tale but he's not actually the real focus the focus is that book who was given to some girl in a hood I don't, we don't know who she is yet but she resurrected Beowulf. So it looks like Beowulf is going to be the new like monster or whatever for this uh, arc. And I'm very excited for it. Definitely looking forward to it. Now we've got the last two issues. I'm sure you already know what they are because, I mean, you know what I like. You've been watching my videos. You've been commenting and liking them. Speaking of, you should do that. You should comment and like this video and if you're not already doing so subscribe i would appreciate it so this one spider-man 42 very fun issue nick spencer i was not expecting the route that you took on this but it was great so i picked up with uh you know boomerang and spidey they still have to get these tablets and this monster gog is just guarding i guess he's the last one or one of the last ones and Spidey makes a comment. He's like, you know, Gog's not really a bad dude. It's not not that I've like seen. I feel like he's, I don't know, maybe in a bad situation every time. So it gives an entire backstory of Gog told in Gog's perspective. And it was pretty sad. It was like a really good story. And I was pretty surprised at it. So once you get through his whole backstory, it comes back into present time. And you see 
Gog is just he's just protecting this tablet because he thinks that's what he has to do. He's not trying to hurt Spider Man or Boomerang. He just he wants to protect this for someone who he thinks like is family, I guess. So A plus story. Speaking of A plus stories, Al Ewing, you have killed it with my top pick of the week, Immortal Hulk, number thirty three. Wow. This was an issue. It was a long issue. The story was incredible. It's got like four pages of like full um, like artwork on both sides. It was all great. Immortal Hulk, I think hands down, is the best series I'm reading right now. This series dove right into like Hulk's mind. You got to see how Zemnu was like messing with everybody. Hulk ended up breaking out through Bruce Banner and you saw like that gruesome gruesomeness from it it was sweet so he got that and then you know hulk did his thing he took his squad over to rocks on so once they hit rocks on you saw that zen New had like his own prerogative the whole time he converted all the people that were in the building into like his like slave monsters like he he changed them completely and he took over the minotaur too so zen New is like he, he's pretty low-key powerful right now so Hulk and his crew came in, messed them all up, did his thing. Minotaur, I think I don't think they killed Minotaur. They may have killed Zemnu. I'm not 100% sure on that. I think they killed Zemnu at the end. Maybe left Minotaur. But yeah, that's you know. Yeah. So they killed Zemnu and then they kind of left Minotaur to like rot or die or whatever. But we got introduced to our uh new enemy the thoughtful man at the very end so it was just i can't even describe this story it was so good seeing everything the artwork was beautiful here's one of the full full spread pages i'll see if i can get another one really quick for you uh i like the other one a lot more where you see bruce banner or you see the hulk burst through this one it just says hulk is free oh my god it's awesome so that's it. Great story. Top pick of the week, 100% Al Ewing. You did kill it. Although, Nick Spencer, you did an A-plus job on your ASM as well. So these are all my issues. Uh, I know I took a little bit of time to upload this video. I know I've been very slow with other videos because I've kind of been trying to work with what, uh, how to like make the page better. That's why I was talking about how I'm going to do... Uh, like Bronze Age, maybe some Silver Age reviews scattered in with some other runs that I have. And, you know, like I said, reviews will be coming. I'm going to be getting new content. Um, you know, all my auction wins, I'll start doing more unboxing videos. I took a little break from buying. But what better time to support some of my friends? So let me know down below what you think, what issues you would like to see, what are even some of your favorite issues. So you're going to be seeing more content on this YouTube page, but make sure you check out my Instagram. I'm still dropping daily stuff. Um, so be sure. Let me know what you guys think. And check out. Make sure you uh, check it out. I got my new giveaway coming up. It's going to be a slab. I, I think you're going to enjoy it. It's a pretty solid one. So with that, please stay safe, guys. Remember, wash your hands. Try not to touch your face. And, you know, with that, have a good night.